be joining us. Good job, like knowing which one you're talking to and which one is not on. <laughs> you're, you're really giving me some great kudos for uh, <laughs> some basic stuff, but I appreciate that. <laughs> that's just based on like some, that's data driven, you know, that's evidence based, just like the times that I've been called Lindsay. No, yeah, that we've been uh, following you for long enough where I, I know you guys. <laughs> so right. you're, you're a drummer? I am. And uh, I lived in LA for a minute. What part of LA are you in? Um, uh, I now I live in Tahunga, which okay. is like very northern, the northernmost point. Yeah. Um, but I lived in like Mount Washington and like Silver Lake, and I lived in Los Feliz in the early two thousand aughts, and yeah. I lived in uh, Silver Lake as well. Uh, Whereabouts? Uh, um pretty much like on the border like right before you get to uh atwater uh, so uh like what street uh waverly oh, okay you lived on waverly i lived on avenel which was the street behind blair's okay oh man you know like long. it's been like what, how years yeah how long 10 years since i lived there 10 years yeah yeah you know edendale grill no. edendale it's like no I probably do. I just don't remember any names. I haven't been to LA in a minute as well. Yeah. How long did you live there? Just two years. I went to uh, Musicians Institute. How was it? I hated it. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, I just didn't like uh, people telling me how to play drums all that much. A bunch of. Oh my god! Oh my god! I I like. I. Uh... Yeah, I'm like a I'm like a drummer activist, drummer advocate, and I'm always trying to explain to guitar players and stuff uh, like the emotional and psychological impact of the way we are treated and how it's like wrong, like it's fucking wrong. And we were I, I was like listening to this record with a friend recently. It was like some record and like the drums were just like, oh, look, I like and maybe this is off the record, but the drums are awful. And I'm like, this is someone this person was probably great. And right before they were about to start tracking or jamming or whatever, somebody walked up to them and was like, this, 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 this. And then basically sabotaged their body's ability to like channel its inherent choices. And therefore the whole fucking thing was done. Like- I totally know what you're talking about. Yeah, yes. It's like, so it's like the undermining is so different. Like it's so different. And also with the way that like, if you're tracking live drums, like you're basically going first, like your thing needs to be done first or in the traditional way. And then some, and then if you just see, you see like throughout history, like uh, hit so hard. Is that the Patty Skemmel documentary about hole? I don't know. I'd you got to see it. it. Yeah. But like how they always are always like, yeah, like, yeah, like we were a band and our, we started making our record, but like our drummer wasn't good enough. So like we hired someone in this. I'm like, you guys like failed your drummer. If your drummer's not good enough, it's because you failed them. <laughs> that, I love that. Yeah. Josh Freese is known for like filling in on a bunch of people's albums. Yeah. Like, well, that's cool. He's like, he's decent. He's, he's all right. He's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was also going to say like, he also has some like garbage guitar solos on some of her stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I also really like her too. I don't. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, what are you talking yeah. about? Are you shit talking? <laughs> well, we're just we're just talking shit. Look, I don't, I'm not, I don't mean anyone any harm. I'm just doing it like a really like simple evaluation, like an objective evaluation. But I was, I've been listening to Fetch the Bolt Cutters, the the Fiona Apple record that came out oh, during wow. the pandemic. Yeah, and like all the percussion on there is so like natural and bizarre and interesting and amazing. Have you listened to it much? I yeah, I actually. By the way, hi Lindsay. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> How are you? Sorry. Uh, yeah. Lindsay, a... have you listened to that record a lot? No, not a lot. It's pretty, oh my like, God. It's pretty like it's it's pretty like heady, right? It's pretty like it's soggy, so... isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's it's also like raw and like it's it's great. Yeah, I mean, everything she does is like insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know yeah. everything she does it's like joanna newsom you know it's like everything they do That's you're just literally like, what i was saying yesterday who so, are you like, like fucking joanna newsom it's like next you, level ai 
yeah are you like a weird alien like how do you make music this good <laughs> all right i'm gonna kick off the intro and uh, we'll just keep on shooting the shit sound good yeah yeah all right hey everybody welcome back to zen Bray project i have two very very special guests on the show today Lindsay troy and julie edwards of deep valley thank you for being here thanks for having us yeah, thank you Thanks for making. Yeah, it I like your I like your spot. It looks just like really cozy and nice. My little basement, yeah. I, I like yeah, look when you can see like part of people's you know homes. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I know. You don't have like you know yeah you don't have like the weird fake background put up or whatever. We were talking about doing that, but uh, yeah, we did no. That this is so much better. I well, love this. That's a it's a really cozy. I like. I want to hang out down there. It looks nice. It's fun. Well, yeah. Have yeah, a basement party awesome. and just like bring bring all our friends. <laughs> yeah, we have we have the little studio <laughs> set up over there, and uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, we were talking about this just before you got on too, but yeah. <laughs> You're also so lucky you have a basement. Where do you live? Uh, Bushwick in Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. You have a basement? I know. Every place has a basement around here. It does. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, learning something new every day. That's um, pretty cool. Well, yeah, because you're not in like New York City. New York City like, is where is people have like tiny. I'm out here. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm definitely, yeah. You're I love deep... having the space. You're deep Bushwick. Deep, deep Bushwick. Bushwick. Almost <laughs> Brownsville, which is like, that's a gnarly area. It's a good name. Brownsville? Brownsville. Almost yeah. Brownsville. How, how far are you from Long Island? From Long Island. How far? I mean, we literally, this is on long island we are on the right. island oh okay there's so another off- person there there is another person yeah. hello i'm michael i'm off camera but i'm Hi. I'm <laughs> so you are you are you're just on one a different end of the long island yeah it's yeah it, you know it's just like deep brooklyn cool so it's all islands unless you're in the bronx in which case that's the mainland and you know that's where my dad is from he's grew up in the bronx in the bronx in- in Parkchester, Parkchester. Do you have family over here still? Um, my grandma lived on Fifty Fifth and Sutton, like all her life. She passed wow. away a few years ago, but I, but I, yeah, I spent a lot. Of, I went to school. I went to NYU for two years. Oh shit! So did Michael. Yeah. Well, wow! Did you graduate? What was your major? <laughs> uh, I studied forensic psychology. Get out of town, sir. I did not. I did not. I studied film, but I'm about to go back to school for forensic psychology and get a master's. So really? we'll see. Wow. And now, you, and now you're doing rock and roll podcasts. So yeah. got some, there needs to be. There's some crossover there. What's Clearly. the connection? He's Zen. <laughs> I guess me. Uh, well, also he's a, he's a badass musician himself. We play yeah. bands together. So. Wow, that's pretty Third cool. Time. Yeah, because Julie's going to do. She wants to become a forensic psychologist. So, yeah, he works. He does. Uh, he's saving. The, he's doing good stuff for the world. He's like trying to rehabilitate people out of prison into like society and. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I want to do. I want to like um, testify in trials for sentencing mitigation. And what do you guys think of the new? The new. Um, oh, actually, I can't talk about this with Julie. It's too triggering for her. Oh shit. Uh, I, that's okay. Let's hear how triggering yeah. can be. The new season of True Detective. God damn it. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I, I loved the first one so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'll just be quiet. It's okay. Yeah, just be quiet. It's the show has come a long way, Julie. Okay. It's pretty cool. So this season, I mean, I still don't know exactly how I feel about it, but there's elements of it that are really cool. It takes place in like Alaska, where like the dark part of the year where it like it's like dark for like three months straight or whatever. And so it's got this kind of like spookiness and it's injury. I don't know. I just, when you said forensic psychology, I just thought of the show for some reason. Yeah. We're all, we're all about that. I, whenever I see some like psychology thing show up in a show, I always hit up Michael. I'm like, what do you think of this? What, do you think this is proper way to interrogate somebody? And he's always like, no. Uh, yeah. Didn't they, shoot in, didn't they shoot it in Iceland? But it's supposed to be Alaska. Is that, it's supposed to be Alaska. Oh, it's definitely. I think they shot it in Iceland. Oh, okay. But maybe, yeah, maybe they shot it in Iceland. Yeah, my friend was a um, dialect coach on it. Whoa. Pretty sure. Wow. She was, in, she was in Iceland for like three months. I heard that Iceland's kind of like having a moment right now, like a real run, like a lot of real renaissance. A lot of people are shooting stuff there. Yeah. I've always seen cool stuff out of Iceland, right? 
Yeah. Yeah, sure. why not? Uh, the Game of Thrones spin-off show. Yeah. Going back to Iceland to do a lot of the same places that Game of Thrones filmed up there. Wow, that's pretty cool. The more you know. I um I was so like didn't I was really late to the Game of Thrones party. Um like I'm I'm never to it. I, oh I, my gosh. But during the like I was kind of a hater because I, I tried watching one episode years ago on an airplane and I just like just somewhere randomly in a season and it was just like a dragon and I was like what is happening but then during the pandemic like early pandemic you know when we all like binge watched shows for like a month straight at the very like beginning of it yep I like binge watched the whole season like all of Game of Thrones from beginning to end and I was like this is so good and I was so sad when it ended I just wanted to keep I wanted to just keep watching it on loop for the rest of my life <laughs> You can uh you can read the books, which there we go. Far more detail. If you're looking for a giant world that just keeps going and going and going and will probably never actually end. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have time to read books anymore because I have two kids, but I just um finally I'm really <laughs> late to the game here with um audiobooks. There so you I go. just started doing that. Um but it's kind of weird because the first book I listened to, like, I'm pretty sure the woman's voice was AI. The fuck? And it was kind of jarring and it like took me a while to get used to. And then I convinced myself it wasn't AI. And by the end of it, I'm like, no, she just has a really annoying weird voice. Um, but then like my fiance got in the car and he's like, why does this sound like AI? And so I was like, oh, it is AI. So that's kind of weird. Like, <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know, they could hire me. Like I'd read the book, you know, I do a great job doing that. Yeah, you can start doing that. Yeah. Um, what 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 do you do in in your regular day to day life? You taught you taught guitar lessons at some point, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm. Uh, it's just, what do I do in my everyday life? Yeah. Well, I have so I have a four year old and I have an eight and a half month old. Sick. Um, and that's like that's full on. Um. It's really fun. I mean, I love it. They're so cute and they're so fun and hilarious. And I love it. Um, but I feel like I feel like I spend half my life like cleaning. <laughs> it's and not like, even cleaning, it's like it's like wiping, like wiping things. For me, it's like trying to declutter and like and so that the book, the finally, the first book I read did on audiobook was uh, the Marie Kondo thing. Are you guys hip to that? No. She's like the the leading guru of like um, minimalizing your life, organizing. Oh I remember. Yeah, that was a thing. So she's like, she's like, has, yeah, she had like a show and all these best selling books. So the whole thing is like, and apparently this is common. She talks about in your book, like a lot of people just feel like no matter how much they like try to clean in the tidy, like they can never get ahead of it. And I, that just basically means you have too many things. That's what she says. So I'm just trying to be like, get rid of so much stuff. Is that, is that why you're selling all your clothes on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. Thanks, Marie. Yeah. So that's so, that, so she has like an order how you do it. First you do clothes and then you do books um and then you do paperwork which i'm really dreading that because paperwork i hate paperwork yes, well that was cool I, don't, I have no idea how that happened sorry go on that was marie kondo being like good job so like weird. thank you for plugging me <laughs> so yeah then it's paperwork then it's like miscellaneous so like all the random just like shit in your house and then the last one is sentimental which is like the hardest so that's why she leaves it for last because mm. at because that point you've gotten really good at like throwing stuff away, but she's kind of spiritual with it. Like you're not just tossing stuff away. Each thing you get rid of, you thank it and then you let it go. Really? Because there's a lot of guilt people have with like hoarding and keeping holding on to stuff, like things that were presents. You're like, you don't really want it, but you feel guilty getting rid of it because it was a gift. So it's kind of like a nice way to like you think it and you let it go, you know? Like she's like, like you always, you don't have to hold on to things forever. They serve their purpose in the moment you received them. They've already served their purpose. Like you don't have to just, she said a lot of houses are like, basically like, um, they should be like your Zen, you know, your super nice place where you feel at peace. But a lot of people's homes end up feeling like a storage unit. And that's how my house feels. 
because I don't have a basement. Well, actually, that's kind of not true. I have a valve. I like have a half like fake valve basement. Yeah, I live in this basement, so uh, it's uh, it's my little zen zone. So that's yeah, that's why it's so cozy. Yeah, it, it's great. I, I like it better than the upstairs we have. So yeah, but uh, um, bitchin', that's cool. Yeah, I also feel I like mean, maximalism is in right now. It I, is. I I don't know. Well. I don't people with cool stuff around. I don't know. I, I just see I, I don't know what the difference is. I saw some designer talk about it on Instagram. So I think mm. I'm hearing some something that's not true. Yeah, I don't uh, mind it when it's other people's houses. Like I can feel cozy in other houses that are like, yeah, just tons of stuff. But when it's my own, that it's more, it's too much. So well, speaking of thanking stuff and letting it go, I have to. <laughs> Good, good segue thank you thank you thank you um <laughs> you're gonna be doing your farewell tour we're gonna see you here at le poisson rouge lpr in new york city but uh what what why why is this your farewell tour so there's um, a lot of things yeah um i'm really sentimental julie's not as sentimental like i'm really good at letting i'm no i'm actually not good at letting like things go like i will hold on to the past and the memories and that not want to let stuff go so um but it's just because it just became really challenging for us for a multitude of reasons to keep the band going at least in its the state it's always been which was like we were road dogs for years um and that becomes really hard when you become a mom so you know totally makes sense yeah yeah i saw you guys play at the chapel in sf a while ago Uh, if you remember i uh got my bathroom poster signed by y'all uh that was that was a fun time your bathroom poster yeah we took the the (laughs) poster from the bathroom the (laughs) for the show i was playing there and the side, oh. I, don't have it. I wish I had it here. It's still in oh, California. That's but, awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I'm trying to like. I feel like, you know, if we were like Beyonce or Billie Eilish or someone like that, and we could just like have the tour buses and the private jets and like endless nannies and endless funds, like, yeah, you could just like homeschool your kids and like bring them on the road with you all the time, you know, and whatever. And that could be like awesome, but that's just not the reality of our band. You know, we're more just kind of like a punk rock road dog touring band that um, it's a bit more grungy. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, yeah. A bit. It's, it's a bit, fun. it's a bit, a bit more grungy than like a Beyonce <laughs> tour. Like, just a bit. Yeah, a little like tiny bit. Yeah. I think a lot of people make them pretty good to Beyonce, but I'm a, uh... <laughs> Even you guys. Uh, well, <laughs> thanks, thanks for the answer on that. I feel like just yeah. like, no. You don't think that Beyonce would feel comfortable on a tour? <laughs> you guys should switch for a week in our van. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a good reality show. Yeah, just try to tour. <laughs> that like, is such like a band, good band show. switch. Like band let switch. us go and um, play the Enormo Dome and be on a private jet. And let her be like in the minivan pulling a trailer, like sharing a hotel room with everyone <laughs> on the tour. And then the van breaks down. And then the van all, breaks down. All her gear gets stolen. Yeah. <laughs> the GoFundMe going. For, uh... Oh my God, that's such a good idea for a reality show. How do we submit for that? I don't know. How do we submit that to her. <laughs> yeah, just, just to figure it out. Trying to do that again. Do you think, how do you think she started? How, do you think she just like toured around? Well, I can't. She's like, well, she was on. in Destiny's. She was in, yeah, of course, Destiny's Child, right? You think they just like toured around in a van together? Like, yeah, they probably did. They probably weren't touring with a band or anything. They probably had, they probably, you know, were kind of showcase, showcase style. Well, they were also like young, they were like teenagers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. They were probably on a major label really early on. So they probably had a lot of big money behind them right away. I think so. Yeah. Since. Obviously, some smart people behind, you know, it's like her her, her career tra- trajectory has been pretty, pretty good, pretty successful. Yeah, she's done pretty good. She's done no. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not not like Deep Valley, but no. she'll get there. She'll get there. Okay, you said she plays the Enormo Dome. Dome. Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love that spot. It's such a good venue. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seen so many good good shows at the end. <laughs> Sound is great. Um, you look great. Yeah. You've did you wear that shirt for Deep Valley? Probably. Because that's like something Julie, like that's like a that's something Julie and I would wear, like the leopard. Yes. That's why I wore it. That is true. And I love it. I that feel like I have I have like a really cool suit that is that print basically. I I think you uh what was it? Uh Jam in the Van? Yeah. I wore it for that. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah, you wore you were probably wore your unitard, your your leopard print unitard for one of the jam in the vans. Yeah, I've had like 50 shades of leopard. <laughs> yeah. Over my that's life. The, that's the that's the biography of Deep Valley, 50 <laughs> shades of leopard. That's a great name. <laughs> I don't I think, think it's going to be a hit. I have two leopard print shirts and I have leopard print boots. Uh, I got to figure out my combination. Wow. Yeah, you know what the best thing is? I was really into this for a while is like um it's like monochromatic, but like clashing. So it's like you wear like every piece of clothing is leopard, but they don't match, but like it works, you know? Hell yeah. Yeah. It's like the jacket, the shirt, the pants, the boots, it's all leopard print, but they're all different versions of it. So it's like, it's, it's texture. It's good. It's satisfying. Yeah. It's like, how deep can you go into the, you know, into the leopard verse and yeah, into the leopard verse. Yeah. Probably pretty deep. Um, so you guys the leopard verse uh let's, let's, let's go down a little memory lane yeah so met, right. I know it's about this like nine million times but y'all met in uh in julie's uh crocheting class do you guys do you guys still crochet i have a lot of longing and nostalgia for 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 me, I I we we I do crochet and knitting, um, but I actually prefer knitting. But I I have a longing for both and nostalgia. Like when I see it, um, actually on True Detective the other night, there was a scene where a woman was knitting, and I said to my fiance, I was like, I miss knitting, but like I don't, you know, I don't really have time for that stuff right now. But actually, I was gonna try to knit something on this next tour. Cause I'm not going to have my kids with me for a couple of weeks. So that would be like the only opportunity I'll ever have again until I'm like 75 to knit. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Are, 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 I, are I did for it. Like you're going to have some time away from the kids and just like party it out one more time. Party. Yeah. Party. It's kind of weird. Like it's, it's kind of sad to be away from my kids for that long, especially cause they're like, they just change and grow so quickly. So they're going to be like different by the time I'm back, especially like my eight and a half month old, you know, it's like, I don't want to miss these precious moments, but you know, it is what it is. Like I have a friend, one of my best mom friends, she went on tour in uh, Hans Zimmer's band and she left her like little ones for three months straight without seeing them. That's so I keep her super insane. And I, That's so I keep lot. reminding myself that like two weeks is nothing. Cause she did, she did three months and, um, for her, she said the first couple weeks were really hard when they were in rehearsal, but then once they started like actually playing the shows and like touring in Europe and stuff, she like had a great time. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh... For me, the kind of partying that I do on tour is I tour manage and I manage and I run the label that's doesn't so it's just like party. party so hard like so blackout laptop just like blackout <laughs> spreadsheet but you're a workaholic like julie gets off on that kind of stuff you know i do it makes me feel safe <laughs> so i'm kind of a workaholic myself uh yeah. are you yeah i yeah i was just talking to michael about this but yeah no i totally get it. it's easier than uh thinking i about i like i i'm a different type of workaholic I like structure. So I like the structure to like, I need someone else to create the structure though, because I'm not good at that. So that's why Julie and I have kind of worked well together because like she can create the structure, um, you know, and then I can like work within that. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. I I kind of need that partner. That's like, you know, has those really good left brain skills, you know, that's, that's what Michael is for me. He's a, He's my dude that takes care of everything <laughs> that that takes like, he, he does all the emailing, which I fucking hate emailing. Well, you know, it's like, 
Michael, right, and Julie, they went to NYU. So it's like, of course, they're ha- they. You have to be organized and like really efficient to like graduate from NYU, right? I think so. Probably it helps. I think <laughs> those who, those of us who've made it out, I think that was a a common a common trait. Yeah, but if you go to the Lower East Side and you see those kids that go to NYU, they look crazy. Do they? <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone looks crazy now. My friend and I were just talking about this, and he said that everyone looks like they're like um, everyone dress dresses now like they're from like what did he say like Spice Girls or like The Matrix or something. Yeah, early two thousands is in. That's like the, that's the vibe where everybody's uh, looking like. But I just mean they party really hard. I just I just can't imagine them. Going. Oh really? Well, it's also New York City. So. Yeah, when I was at NYU, I had sworn off all, um partying and all I was really doing was like sort of like methamphetamines and making films in film school so yeah sick that's that's when I that's when I learned to be yeah that's when I learned to be the zero fun zone that I've grown into in my adult life gotcha I I feel like you're you're really under under us I don't don't know (laughs) if that's the right word no you're not it's basically what I'm saying (laughs) um she, how did you when was, what was she, the she learned how to do the zero fun zone and i learned how to do the zero fund zone hey. fun. <laughs> zero fun <laughs> zero fund zone because i'm a college dropout so you know where did you drop out of college well i made um i kind of got around for a while in the community college scene you know <laughs> community and, college scene um so i did a you know, I did Grossmont College in San Diego, and then I did LA City College. Um, I even did, I think, some. Um, L- then I did LA City College, and then, um, yeah, and then I did. I transferred to Cal State LA, so a really prestigious Ivy League. College. Take it easy. Take it easy. That's where I'm going to go to to grad school for forensic psychology. So. Yeah, no, it was actually, it was chill. I I felt like it was like, it kind of felt like a commuter school. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't like living in a dorm room and having like the real college experience. You know what I mean? But like, get that. It was chill. But then like, I, um, how old was I, man? I was like 21 or something. And then my ex boyfriend and I broke up and I like, it was like on the verge of a nervous breakdown and I dropped out. <laughs> <Sounds about right. laughs> Never went back. You get that? Yeah. I I mean, who needs school anymore? Uh I know y'all are short on time. So uh I just wanna quickly ask, like, or just say, so you you mean a lot to a lot of people in the sense of your music and people call you like feminist icons and all that what what sort of advice do you have for people who want to start out in music up and coming rock and rollers uh that kind of you guys kind of carved out your own path in this uh industry and it's it's shown you know you've reaped the rewards of it so what advice do you have for people my advice would be to watch saint vincent's master class on song <laughs> really she has some really good my uh, advice would be to take someone else's advice <laughs> <laughs> well no i she she had some she's a work i mean she's a full workaholic crazy i mean yeah crazy workaholic with her music and at the end of the day like the work ethic and that i feel like a, that's a lot of what it comes down to um and that's something that i want to instill in my kids because I, I just feel like, like something she says in that master class, which she was like, when you're like, make, like when you're young, you know, and when you have all this free time, like you're right when you're a teenager before you like get a job or whatever and grow up and have life, that's when you need to just like put in all the hours to like practice, 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 because then you're not going to have that free time when you're older. And that's something I want my kids to know, you know, um, because you never, yeah, you never really that's it's such like if you can really hone your craft at that age and like create a good work ethic for yourself then I feel like you're really golden for the rest of your life yeah my advice would be to become a radiologist 
You can work remotely. You analyze the x-rays. They're sent to you. You don't have to go in. It pays really well. So All right. that's my advice to musicians. Wow. So I just feel like... <laughs> I feel like I was always, I always had like a, like, I mean, music is, it's like the thing I'm good at. It's the thing I've been good at since I was like four years old. It's the thing I've always done. Um, but I feel like you have to like, I, you have to treat it like I, people just need to, if you decide you want to do music, you have to treat it like a full-time job. You need to like, take it seriously you need to treat it like a nine to five job. I feel like you need to like force yourself to have that structure and work those hours and be organized if you really want to be successful. And that would be my advice. But I think also the worst part, I feel for me, for me, the worst part now about being a musician now is the marketing reality of social media. So like now, if you want to do it, because I think we we kind of both of us became musicians before that even existed. Like I think in my first band, we had like a MySpace profile or whatever. But mm-hmm. um, that's how yeah, that's how we met Vincent Gallo. He actually sent us yeah. a message on MySpace. Wow. Through MySpace. But like yeah. nowadays, you have to share everything. You have to like post constant videos of yourself playing your instrument, whatever it is, and you have to grow your own marketing base. And that is what you, that's the absolute mandate. So like this pure beauty of the before time where unfortunately the the bad side was there were gatekeepers and you had to wait for one of them to elect you in order for anything to happen. But the bright side was you could really just be a musician instead of being like a content creator influencer. And to me, those are different jobs. Like a lot of musicians are kind of like, introverted depressed people so yeah. like to ask someone like that you know i always think about elliot smith like there'd be just elliot smith just wouldn't exist now it wouldn't be able to happen because he'd never post on fucking social media he'd You're never like, hey, be like hey, hey guys, guys hey guys <laughs> like it would be lost to the world it would be a lost thing and for me that's like the darkest tragedy Like, on the other hand, it's great that if you have, if you're comfortable with it or you have the discipline or you've hired out someone to do that for you, that you can, you can start to build your own marketing base and like make it happen for yourself. It's just like the full-time job is the marketing and you're marketing yourself and you're doing it on your phone. And I think like, I may have not ever gone into a creative, like a visible career if those were the stakes. I really may have just started out as a radiologist or a forensic psychologist in this life. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, for me, me, I hate it, like, personally. Well, yeah, it's hell. I mean, that stuff, I I can't. (laughs) uh, Like, I mean, one of my, yeah, so this year, this year for me has been, like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that I have two kids now and where I'm at in my life, but I'm trying to cut out like all the like habits that waste my time and like get in the way of me succeeding in my life. So I actually, one of my new year's resolutions was like to delete social media. Um, so fortunately, Julie's been <laughs> doing some, a lot of the social media and I even had to, but it was really like getting bad for my mental health. Uh, so I just needed to just take a break from it. So I deleted Instagram off my phone for like a month and it was awesome. I had to reinstall it because we're promoting for this tour, but I'm now, now I'm like very minimal with it. Like I'll pop on, do something and get right off. You know, I'm not like wasting my time. I'm like, you know, an hour later, you're like, what just happened? You know, I just you went to a fuke state and you're just, what did I just look at for an hour? Ours, I know. I so, like, I so rarely do that. I don't, I don't like... I don't do that for me. It would be something that like when I was trying to like decompress at the end of the day and like laying in bed and kind of just, yeah. Just see my, my way of decompressing laying in bed at the end of the day is I read news. Yeah. I read the news, but no, that's also really bad for my mental health. Like I don't want (laughs) to do with any of it. Like, honestly, like, I don't know what it is. I just, I can't handle any of it. So I'm just like, we're going to try to just like live in my little bubble and just try to 
get rid of as many things as I can and just stay focused. <laughs> I get that. I mean, it's so it takes like three seconds to post something, but yeah, I always end up on social media for like an hour after, and then you're well, like, that's by design. You know what I mean? That's not that's not by accident, right? Like the algorithm knows what it's doing, so they're they're trying to suck you in. So, anyways, I was just like, I need to be really, um, I need to be really efficient with my time now. So I'm just like trying to break all the habits that waste any of my time, so that I can just like get the most out of this life that I I want to. So yeah, it's 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 problematic with the social media thing because it is weird. Like over the last couple of years, there's been times where it's like, yeah, I'm going to get really good at, I'm going to get really good at um, marketing myself and I'm going to try to do the TikTok thing and really do it. So then I would like start trying to do the TikTok thing. Cause I'm like, this is what you have to do now to really promote your art. And then it's like, then at the, I would just feel really gross. I'm like, I just spent hours like making videos of myself on TikTok. Like, this is weird. Like, what am I doing? Like, not why you got in the band. What am I doing with my life? This is so gross and weird. Like, I don't like this. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that Julie and I just, we got really lucky because we got, like, the last, we got in at the very last, um, the very last moment of, like, the old school model of getting to, like, I guess, like she said, there's upsides and downsides to it, but getting to just be a band without having to do all that stuff, you know? Yeah. What was the goal of the band when you first started? To be yeah. rock stars. Is that fun? Be rock stars? Do that yeah. Just to like fucking destroy people. Destroy, destroy people with rock? Destroy people. Destroy people. Like, right. you know, blow their minds, melt their faces, you know, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, like, no, I get it. And uh, I mean, y'all had your first show uh, in Silver Lake and uh, it was just off to the races after that. Were you always in band? Yeah. Um, I was in a band, one band before Deep Valley called The Pity Party with my best friend, Mark. And we were like, like an angular experimental art rock two piece. And I actually, I learned how to play drums in that band. I started playing drums when I was 25, but in Pity Party, I played drums with my right uh, arm and my legs. And I played like bass lines on a Yamaha DX7 with my left hand. So when I learned how to play drums, I didn't like- What did I do with this thing? Yeah. Hey. Oh, right on. I didn't, I didn't use, you know, I wasn't, my left arm didn't, do it wasn't playing drums and then in deep valley i had to like teach my left arm to like get get on in there and like get involved and like be in time and stuff which was interesting um and that that band the pity party's first show was also at silver lake lounge it's a great venue yeah yeah, yeah i grew up doing i grew up doing um music my whole life but it was kind of like a weird thing because I like loved it, but also was like, I had a dadager, like my dad managed me when I was really young. And I just like, didn't like that world. Like, I don't, I didn't like that world of like people trying to make a child star out of me. Like it was weird and icky. It wasn't really fun the way like Deep Valley has been so much fun. Like yeah. we have been in like full control of our career. I mean, we've, there's been times we've had to fight to the nail to do that, but like, we've been in full control of like our vision, our whole career. And it's been really fucking fun, you know, compared to the weird, yeah, that weird like taste of child stardom I had failed, failed child stardom or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's, it feels like you knew what you didn't want to do. And uh, that probably just made it so much more funded. Yeah, because I was on a so I was on a major label. Like, well, I got like a record deal. I got like a mini record deal when I was twelve, and then I got like a bigger record deal when I was fifth when I turned fifteen with Electra. And my sister and I were in a band together, but we just hold these like just weird just dudes like weird mansplaining dudes. And even some like weird older women we wrote with too, like just all these older people just trying to like shape our sound and like everything. And it was just, 
it was just weird and icky. Like it wasn't that it wasn't fun. I don't know how to describe it. Like, so I knew I didn't want that. Yeah. You just want to like scream baby at all hell, you know, just to yeah. pop your lungs with your, with your best friend rocking on it. Yeah. We just really like what we made, like has always been very pure and um, so much fun. Like the most, it's the most I don't know. I'm convinced it's like the most, it's one of the most fun genres to play live, like rock me, like rock and roll music. Um, I, I definitely think like, and I don't even like listen to that much rock and roll anymore because sometimes I just need like background music while I'm doing stuff. I'll put on something like a bit more chill. But then when I do, like when I put on like, you know, Queens of the Stone Age or something and I'm just like, oh my God, this music is so fucking good. But my point is that like, I just feel like rock and roll music. It's like the, it's so much fun to play live. It's so fun. Yeah. You know, the shows. It's like, I was a singer. I also went through a phase before D Valley where I did the singer songwriter thing and did like shows on acoustic guitar solo. It's just so, it was so boring to me. Yeah. uh, I didn't like it. I always feel that way about singer songwriters it's it, they have to be so good to be like interesting I, it's something i actually want to watch because i'd rather see a band personally yeah and even just performing it it's like really sad music you're like playing these sad songs alone on a stage and i'm just like this is so like just sad and boring like being in a band was just so much more fun to me you know well i have one more question for y'all and i'll let you get back to do what you got to do today. And I ask everybody this, um, what do you do to deal with imposter syndrome or what do you feel like you're not stacking up to something or what gets you through, uh, those emotions? What, what do you do personally? Lindsay, do you have, imp- do you have imposter syndrome, Lindsay? I don't have any. I, um, I think I used to, I think there was a time when I was like, I used to think that like, I needed to like, know how to read music and like understand all these like key signatures and all this music theory and I didn't like know really know I wasn't very good at that stuff and so I think I did feel imposter syndrome and then I realized that like a lot of my favorite artists and some of them are people we've been able to collaborate with like don't know any of that stuff and they're like some of the most talented guitar players I've ever met so like it actually doesn't matter at all so yeah, nothing really matters. Just do what you want to do for fun. Well, it's just really? like, it's just, yeah, you have to find, you just find what you like, you know, you always just have to make what you like and then trust that other people are going to like it too. Like if you love it, you know, then I think other people will too. I, I don't know. Imposter syndrome. Well, there, there, there was that era where like you wanted to like, start taking drum lessons and you wanted to feel like you were more like classically trained or whatever. Oh yeah. I mean, I've had severe imposter syndrome my whole life in in any form, no matter what I'm doing. Weirdly the last like year it's actually dissipated. I'm not really sure what happened other than like, um, yeah, totally what he said, but yeah, I think like, um, I don't know just being the boss and running everything. And then other people need to worry that they're being an imposter, you know, Mm -hmm. like I can never join any club that would have me as a member, Mm -hmm. but. Well, I think one of the great things about like growing up and getting older is that you you kind of stop giving a shit about all that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I had wild imposter syndrome when I was a teenager. Like all I wanted to do was like, for like, like the cool rocker guys I had a crush on to think I was cool, you know? So like, I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to make sure like I knew about what the the cool music and the cool this and that. And like, it's just, it's all just bullshit. Like you just have to be who you are. You know what I mean? And like what you like, you should never try to like impress other people. It's really dumb. A waste of time. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I think like I've, like I, I, you know, I almost never would read reviews and I almost have this like weird baked in unwillingness to give a shit literally about like anything external, probably to my detriment. But I think that's, 
a really like extreme coping mechanism for imposter syndrome actually <laughs> is I just have to like shut everything out completely and just you know be like we're doing this and fuck everything else like yeah well, yeah well uh y'all are going on tour it's the farewell tour we're yeah tour. also going to be releasing uh Cistronics, uh the re-release 2.0 2.0 uh, baby fresh fresh tunes on there um yeah open the floor what anything you want to say to fans out there people listening it's all you yeah just make sure when you're streaming uh cistrionics that you're listening to deep valley's version mm -hmm. um because then we'll get the one sixteenth of a penny instead <laughs> of the label so thank you <laughs> <laughs> and um we're also we're we we're, we released it on our own label and we're doing like cds cassette tapes um and a double vinyl in really limited runs and those are all available directly through us at deepvalley.com which is spelled d-e-a-p-v-a-l-l-y.com both of those words are misspelled <laughs> uh and um the name of the label as well deep valley records Oh, really we're hiring. Stretch. We're hiring a and oh, oh yeah, we we are hiring so <laughs> we're <laughs> signing bands. Um and uh when is this gonna air? Put it out right before uh y'all go on tour. Make sure it gets out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We like um you know, this is our farewell tour. So this is basically your last chance ever to see us play live. And these are also some of like the best shows we've ever done, I think. Um in the end. And like yeah. Whether we're good good or not, like what we are is like completely unique. And I have yet to find anything else like us. And I've looked, I've searched. Um, so you know, if you like to have a unique experience that won't happen again, you can come if that's like what's exciting to you whether you like rock and roll or whether you like women or whatever it is you like just <laughs> come have a unique uh, live music experience and then also sloppy jane is opening for us and she's like um if frank zappa was radical he's so yeah. she's like an entire experience unto herself like visionary performance artists um with like the deepest most hewn into rock set of creative convictions i've ever witnessed it's in my really, life I was so, listening to her music last night and it's yeah it's it definitely it's, fits with what we do like she's yeah she's a weirdo like us you know yeah she's a punk she's going against all odds and expectations <laughs> so i love it <laughs> So so for the show. Uh, yeah. So yeah, come on the come get tickets for this tour. It's your last chance ever to see us live. Uh, if you want to meet with us or hang with us, we're doing a meet and greet thing that you can do. We in the in the past we used to like come out and sell merch and like meet our fans, but it's just gotten a lot harder to do that at this point. Um. So yeah, if you want to do that, you can get our meet and greet. Also, like yeah, we're doing a limited run of this if this Cistrionics 2.0 on vinyl. So. We'll definitely have like a collector's item and it's so good it's it's better than the original you know it just sounds heavier it's just sounds more dynamic you've got all these b-sides and like demos that people have haven't heard and um it's it's really fucking badass yeah very excited for it we'll uh we'll get the vinyl for sure uh hey lindsay julie thank you so much been a big fan of yeah. yours for a while and uh oh thank you and, thank you so much oh and yeah like i said cannot wait for it and michael's got a little something to say oh thank you guys really uh it means a lot to us to have you on and we've we um, really have been fans for a long time so uh i i think i'm speaking on like a lot of us when we say just like thank you for everything you've put into this for the last over 10 years like these jams are gonna uh keep going for a long time making people happy Thank you. Thank so you so much. I'm going to pick your brain about forensic psychology on the side, maybe. Oh, please do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. Y'all have a great rest of your day and uh, I'll see you soon. Hey, for the love of God, please subscribe to our Patreon for like a dollar a month. That would help out a lot. Podcasts are, fun fact, really expensive to run. 
and I really enjoy doing this. So if you want to keep on seeing stuff like this, help me out. Also, like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I really hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.